Hello everyone, I'm Lindsay Stora and today I'm going to do a demonstration based on the work of Mark Powell. Mark Powell is a London based artist and he uses things like envelopes and maps to draw on top of. He says that he's preserving a little bit of history. Right now, as we are in the COVID-19 crisis, I thought it would be quite nice to draw on the letter which came from the government. However, I can't put my hands on it at this time, but I have created an envelope and I've started to lay out how I think I may want my uh, background arranged. So I'll show you that and then we'll progress to me doing a drawing um, similar to Mark Powell on the background. Thank you. Here are two examples by Mark Powell. You can see that he's interested in the wrinkles and the close-up of the face. I've collected a pile of things together, such as postage stamps, parcel paper, envelopes, both inside and outside. And I've actually resorted to making myself... Uh, I've got a plain envelope and I've made myself what appears to be a letter. Um, over here, I've opened up a an envelope and I'm going to start arranging things on it. So Mark Powell quite often he has the actual point the so I'm just looking at composition and thinking out how I may want my portrait on here so um, I'm going to arrange it something like this so I've been trying out different arrangements already and I'm starting to think, right, where would I like the eyes to be positioned in this piece? And I'm going to have a pair of eyes on it because I'm going to have a detailed view, but quite large. And I think that this arrangement will be the start. So I've prepared the background. This is the stage I'm at presently. But for those of you who want to start, I'm just going to go back to the beginning and I've prepared another small background here and I will show you how I would begin. Firstly, make sure you're working from some decent source material. I've got Grandad again here, he's coming quite handy of late. Um, what you need to do then is, I don't want the line all the way around the head, which is where I would normally start because Mark Powell doesn't do that. However, you could do a pencil line for that and erase it. So I'm going to begin with the eyes. So if the bits of the face don't fit on, it doesn't matter because Mark Powell doesn't necessarily include the whole of the face. So I start with one eye like this and roughly marking where it's going. As you can see, it's all quite sketchy, like it would be as if I were working in pencil. The eyes, there's a rule that says that there should be approximately five eyes between, um, spacing between like one here, one here, one here and one here. Um, and halfway down the face comes the nose. But without having any markers on, I've just got to use my reference material and hope that I'm judging this in the right sort of position. The lips should extend to, to come, uh, the ends of the lips, the corners of the mouth, should actually reach somewhere near the centres of the eyes. So even by looking at my photograph, I can see that. That rule is accurate. And up here, I've got quite a large space for the forehead and the hair come in there somewhere. Ears a bit higher than that and his head's tilted on my drawing so this is actually slightly higher and then down for the angular shape of the jaw 
Then when we're creating form, firstly I will draw in um, the detail of, of this eye so that I can see that I've got it accurate. The eyeball is like a polo mint. So the centre bit, the centre black bit must be concentric, which means if you had a compass, a pair of compasses, and you um, drew the circle, it would be absolutely in the centre. Um, and it would match on all of the, the curves of it. So try to make sure you do that. Um, the eyes will always have some form of light in them because they are a sphere. So make sure you're looking for that light. So I'll add them passages first. Darken here. And then I begin to either cross hatch or shade. So my technique will be cross hatching because that is my preferred technique. I've put that eyebrow too low, but it won't matter at this stage because you'll see what happens as I go forward. The eye whites as well are not really purely white so you must make sure that you're putting enough onto them to make sure they're not purely white enough tone it can be very light So his eyebrows come in here. Don't forget that we've got to follow the facial contours. So if you think about the skull, how it sits out, how this is a socket, don't forget that it's almost like having panda eyes. You need to make sure that you include that. And then this part of the face is all much, much darker because that's in shadow because it's going around the corner. Grandad was uh, probably about 80 on this photograph, so he's got lots of wrinkles. And Mark Powell, you'll see, likes them wrinkles. That's, that's what he actually focuses on, the contours, the wrinkles, and he adds all the detail. So... So that's how you're going to start off and I'm going to go back onto the one that I was doing before because I got a lot more done and uh, I'll go on to time lapse. Make sure you're following the contours of the skeleton. Here you'll see that I'm darkening some areas so that I'm using the whole tonal range. I tend to work all over the picture, but you'll see again, when I come onto the chin, the contour must follow the shape and look how the muscle structure of the face goes and how the skin hangs. And this is the final drawing. 